Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Clayton County Board of Education board work session and board meeting. At this time, we are back in our Zoom format. And I think I'm glad that we are because it looks like we're going to have some very stormy weather this evening. And I think the safest place for us at this time is to be in our residences, not at a location. So at this time, I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's six o'clock and I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Ms. Jasmine Bowes, District One. Present. Mr. Mark Christmas, District present. Two. Well, I know he's present. I've spoken to him. Present. Thank you. Uh, District Three, Jesse Gore, that's me present. District 4, Ms. Victoria Williams. Present. District 5, Dr. D. Haney. Present. District 6, Ms. Mary Baker. Present. District 7, Ms. Sabrina Hill. Present. District 8, Dr. Alika Anderson. District 9, Mr. Benjamin Straker. Superintendent. Dr. Morsey's Beasley, Dr. Beasley, I know he's here. I'm present. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Attorney uh, Mr. Clem Doyle, present. Board Coordinator Dr. Shantara Rump Carter, present. Administrative Assistant to the Superintendent and Board Ms. Don Blau, present. And I want to thank the Clayton County Public School Administrative staff that is all present here in communications for uh, in enabling us to have this meeting. Uh, I'm going to have a special presentation. It's actually a student presentation that we weren't able to, one of the students uh, was not, you didn't hear it last meeting because we had some te technical difficulties. And because this is our last board meeting, uh, for the this fiscal year, I thought it would be a good idea to end it since we're all about students to end it with a student presentation. So this is a presentation. This is Donovan Slack, who is one of our singing brothers and a young man who received some acclaim at our last board meeting. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to communications and allow you all to play uh, this board, this student work. Oh, 
Daniel Atkin. This is my story. You, you don't know, no, 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 no me. And that is what's troubling. Just walking my dog. Right, I was on a day and still until I walked up to the car. Driver, 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 oh, oh. He, he shot me. My name is Daniel Atkins. And the Cordell Crew is walking free. Name is Daniel, Daniel. Name is Daniel, Daniel. My name's Andre Hill, and I. Why it's being told to you? I was in a garage doing not do not do not do nothing wrong. My phone was in my hand. The dogs had begun, and within ten seconds. Life flashed before my eyes. I still can't believe that a boy is walking free. My name is Andre. Andre. Name is Andre. Andre. We, we as a people, but together we can save the world, save humanity, have equality in all. Come together, a new society. Starts with you and me. Tomorrow starts today. Tomorrow, tomorrow starts today. Tomorrow starts today. Starts today. What's the point of waiting? A new society to save humanity. Let's do tomorrow. Starts today with you and me.
All right, everyone. I hope that you all could hear that. I had some people that in the chat that said that they couldn't hear it. But I hope that if you couldn't hear it, I hope that you read the last statement by the student that if we want to change things, that we can't have hatred, that we got to come back, come together to eradicate the violence that's in this country. And I know that this year, this is, I think this is the first board meeting that I've started and I haven't had to ask for a moment, moment of silence for anyone, but I do know that everyone is watching what is going on around us each and every day. We seem to have such a violent nation. People uh, just seem to get agitated for no reason at all. So we, this is our last board meeting for this fiscal year. And I, I want our staff to go home and enjoy. You're gonna have a break soon. I want you to go home and do some self-care and relax and calm down and all those types of things. So I, I wanna thank John, Donovan Slack again for that very moving rendition. And it is on YouTube if you couldn't hear it. Uh, you can go back to YouTube and view it again. At this time, I'm going to read the ethics statement, which says, in accordance with board policy, BH, it is the duty of every board member to avoid both conflicts of interest and appearances of such conflicts. Does any board member have any known conflict of interest or appearance of such conflict with respect to any matter scheduled to come before the board at this meeting or appearing on our proposed agenda? If so, please identify the conflict or appearance of conflict and refrain from participation in the matter involved. Okay, so you all will let me know. At this time, the next item on the agenda is the, is the adoption of the agenda. And I'm going to let everyone know that one of the items on the agenda as we go down the page is, the, is under the business agenda for action. We have uh, two charters that would be item D and E, Omega Charter, K5. Uh, that is supposed to be a presentation by Dr. Ebony Lee and then the Omega Charter 6-8, also by Dr. Ebony Lee. At this time, we are going to remove those items from the agenda. After talking to administration this morning, we are going to have those two items go back to the petitioner for revisions and we will address them at the next board meeting. So we are removing those two items. And um, so therefore under the business agenda, we would move up item F, which is Utopian Academy of the Arts that will come up and actually be item D. So at this time, I need a motion for the ad adoption of the agenda with those two items removed. Do I have a motion from anyone? Madam Chair, with the revisions. All right, I have a motion from Dr. Anderson. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, I have a, um, it's been moved by Dr. Anderson and seconded by uh, Ms. Williams. I cannot see everyone because there are many, many people on this call. So I'm going to call the roll for the vote. Ms. Bowles. Yes. Mr. Christmas. Yes. Ms. Goree, yes. Ms. Williams. Yes. Dr. Haney. Yes. Ms. Baker. Yes. Ms. Hill. Yes. Dr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Straker. Yes. All right, it is unanimous. At this time, I will turn the turn this over, I believe, to Mr. White for board recognitions. Thank you, Ms. Gorey. Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, members of the board. Superintendent Beasley, ladies and gentlemen. Individuals who are part of tonight's board recognitions have been extended invitations to join us on our meeting platform. And I'm noticing that quite a few of them are here. So that's really good. It is, uh, it, we will be sending out certificates of commendation from the board to each of the individuals during the upcoming week. Our first recognition involves a member of the Division of Business Services, a director in that division, Tamika Billingsley, has achieved the Certified Administrator of School Finance and Operations certification as issued by the Association for School Business Officials International. 
School business professionals who earn this certification have proven that they have the required knowledge, expertise, and fiscal credibility to lead their school district and effectively manage the district's finances. To earn this certification, Ms. Billingsley had to prove eligibility through work experience and education, pass a comprehensive two-part exam that tests competency in a variety of related fields, and adhere to the ASBO International Certification Code of Content. Again, we congratulate Ms. Billingsley for achieving this outstanding accomplishment and for earning this certification, Ms. Billingsley. Let us at least have a Miss Billings. I see so many people. Can Miss Billingsley say a word or two? She's Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Madam Chair and board members and community members. Thank you so very much, Ms. Gorey. You put me on the spot. <laughs> Um, uh, thank you for um, for recognizing me for this for this accomplishment in school business um, is something I have been um, striving to work on and, and complete um, over the past couple of years and I finally just dived into it um, talking with different um, people um, within school business just dive right into it take the test and, and, and complete it and it um, it yield the benefits of what I've been working towards so I'm, I'm greatly appreciative and I'm happy that it happened while I was an employee with Clayton County Schools, and I hope to continue to serve Clayton County Schools to the best of my ability as long as you all will have me. Thank you. To continue our recognitions, tonight we recognize the Clayton County Public Schools students who, as members of Class 73 of the Orange Duffel Bag Initiative, successfully completed a 12 week program thus earning a certificate of achievement, an orange duffel bag, and a fully loaded laptop computer. The program is a collaborative effort involving the school district, Clayton State University, United Way of Greater Atlanta, the Georgia Department of Human Resources, and ODBI. It provides coaching to students who are homeless or in foster care or who are greatly at risk of not completing their education by focusing upon reflection, planning, and transition. They do this by using the seven rules of the road. These include desire, awareness, change, and gratitude. It should be noted that the students of Class 73 completed the program while Clayton County and its communities continued to cope with the COVID-19 pandemic working through and completing course assignments virtually. Tonight, we recognize the seven Clayton County Public Schools students who successfully completed this portion of their journey. Shaquille Wynn of Jonesboro High School, Arika Tolbert of Drew High School, Jemiah Willis of Riverdale High School, Tariq Harris, of Perry Career Academy, Tatiana Booker of Drew High School, Tanisha Ross of Riverdale High School, and Kala Flemeister of Stillwell School of the Arts. We congratulate each member of the class of 73 for this outstanding accomplishment. Mr. White, do, can you see from your vantage point whether any of these students are on the call? If they are, at least let them say a word or two. Well, we do invite them to do so if they were able to make it. I, I'm talking with uh, Ms. Davis. She said that she was uh, she managed to contact a few of the individuals, but she didn't know if they would be able to make it on the call with us this evening. Okay, well, if any of you are on the call, please unmute and give us a word. Okay, hearing none, we'll move right along. Our final recognition also involves the Orange Duffel Bag Initiative. Since 2014, our school district, the Orange Duffel Bag Initiative, and Clayton State University 
have partnered to provide ODBI's after school coaching program and curriculum to Clayton County public school students in need, helping them to stay on track for life and educational success. As a result of this ongoing relationship, Clayton County Public Schools is the first ever school district to offer its professional staff an opportunity to earn Orange Duffel Bag Initiative coaching certification. Earlier this month, 11 members of the district staff completed a three-day professional development training opportunity conducted at Clayton State University. Tonight, we recognize the following graduates of what is being called Class 1 ODBI CCPS Coaching Certification Program. These professionals, representing a diverse group of district departments, will work together to empower students to embrace and reach their best personal and educational potential. I will call out each individual and their location and assignment. I will also, uh, I know a lot of these faces are on the, the call right now. So uh, you guys just hang in there. Uh, we start off with Chandra Graham, uh, special ed parapro at South Metro. Oh, I see her. Roderick, do you want them to speak individually or do you want to go ahead and do the whole group? Oh, just go ahead and call. I see Miss Graham. When you finish calling, we'll just let them say a word or two because one of the students, Shaquille Wynn, said oh, that they were actually on the call, but they couldn't unmute. So that person was here. So just call everybody and then we'll let them say okay. a word. Roderick Holloman, Student Engagement Specialist, Perry Career Academy. Serena Jean Simon. Simon International Student Advisor, International Center. Please forgive me. Candy Middlebrooks, Student Engagement Specialist at the Perry Career Academy. Stephanie Sims, Student Engagement Specialist, Homeless Education Department. Kanisha Smith, School Social Worker, North Clayton High School. Sandra Smith, Program Evaluator, South Metro. Sabrina Stewart, Student Engagement Specialist, Lovejoy High School. Valencia Thompson, School Psychologist, Department of Student Behavioral Health. Stacia Cooper, Lead Psychologist, Department of Student Behavioral Health. And Sonia Davis, Coordinator, Homeless Education Department. All right. Congratulations. Hey, I, the first name I saw was Miss Miss Graham. Miss Graham, you can you unmute and give us a word? Good evening, everyone. Hello. Um, I just want to say to be chosen for this opportunity to go through the ODBI coaching certification training was awesome. If I just have to sum it up in one word, it was awesome. It was very enlightening. It was an encouraging certification program. And I am just really looking forward to the near future and what I can do and what else is brought to me. So I thank Ms. Sonia Davis for the opportunity. I thank the coaches, vice president, president of ODBI. And the days we were there were just very awesome. And I'm just ready for the near future. Thank you. Do we have any other awardees? And is Ms. Davis on the call? I am on the call. Okay, Ms. Davis. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, um, board members, Dr. Beasley, uh, for this awesome opportunity to be uh, part of the sponsorship of Class One. The ODBI program has been a program that we have fostered in the Homeless Education Department for many years. And I'm just proud now that we're able to have these awesome group of coaches be able to take this program district wide. Um, I, I know that we do have some students online and I think the best testimony of any program that works are the students. The students of class 73 are here, but more important, Ali, these are the students of the coaches of class one and we plan to make a difference in our district. Thank you for the opportunity and um, I'm just, proud to be part of an awesome team of coaches. 
Okay, I'm gonna, because I am a senior citizen and I may forget this, I know we're, I'm telling all of you all to say a word now, but since I have Ms. Davis present, and I'm not sure if if uh, Dr. Collier is on this call, but I need to give them a shout out real quick because I will forget. Uh, I just want you all to, to let you know how Clayton County Public Schools cares. Dr. Rump Carter sent me an email the other day about a family that she saw that was on, um, I think the Nextdoor app or on Facebook where there are 10 siblings and I think one person is taking care of them. And someone tagged me on Facebook. I they, the, the kids, I mean, the family might be evicted, but the children want to stay in Clayton County. And I and I told Dr. Ron Carter, I said, send an email to Dr. Collier and Miss Davis. And I tell you, it, it wasn't 60 seconds later, they were on the job, uh, you know, reaching out to, the, to that family uh, for services. So I, I just want you all to know that we are a school district that cares. So I wanted to give you that shout out now because we start talking and I will forget. All right. Do we have any other people on the on this call? Hi, I'm, hello, I'm Renita Shepard, the parent of Shaquille Wynn. Okay, Miss Shepard. Hey, I, I just want to say thank you, uh, Ms. Davis, for allowing she, to kill to be a part of the program. Um, he was able to finish school with straight A's and play football and work at McDonald's while doing ODBI program. So I'm proud of him. And I, I thank you all for allowing my child to participate. All right. <laughs> we have anyone else that was whose name was Kyle? Yeah, um, my name is Tyreek Harris, and I really wanted to thank Ms. Davis and Ms. McNeil for recommending the program to me and recommending me to the program. It really helped me out during school because I wasn't on track to finish, but since I did the own stuff back program, I actually did finish and graduate. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Do we have anyone else? Okay, well, I want to say congratulations to all of those names that uh, Mr. White called. Mr. White turned it back over to you. And in addition, uh, one of the things we'd like to do because of the fact that this is probably the first of what is considered hopefully to be a lot of uh, professional development opportunities for our staff and the fact that we are the first one anywhere to have this kind of an opportunity. We wanted to take this opportunity to recognize and extend our heartfelt appreciation to the following Orange Duffel Bag Initiative representatives who make this successful collaboration for our students and our staff work and make it possible. They are ODBI coach Luis Castro, uh, the ODBI president Michael Daly, and ODBI Vice President Diana Black. Without their leadership and support, we would not be able to accomplish what we've been able to accomplish for students who are in need of assistance to put them back on track and get them to cross the stage to pick up their diploma and achieve for their, for their life. So we wanna say thank you to them and also a special thank you again to Ms. Davis for spearheading the project in our uh, school district. All right, Ms. And Davis. that concludes our recognitions. Okay, well, I get I did get a text message from Miss Felicia Brown, proud principal of Jonesboro High School, and she said she's here on YouTube and extremely proud of Mr. S. Wynn, our up and rising freshman uh, at Jonesboro High School, and all of the students. So I wanted to give that acknowledgement as well. And before we uh, finish uh, giving acknowledgments. I do believe that this is the last week. I'm not sure if Dr. Hines, president of Clayton State, might be watching the board meeting, but I do believe that Friday will be his last day. So uh, Clayton County um, Schools, let's give a shout out to Dr. Hines and all the great work that he's done over there at Clayton State. Yay, everybody. Do Unmute yourself and hey, give Hines. a shout out to Dr. Hines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be missed. Definitely. Yes, Dr. Hines is he's about to join the best club in the world. You all, all y'all people that got a few years, that retirement club is as the best club of them all. Anyway, 
I, so we have everybody, uh, Mr. White? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. At this time, the next item that we have on the agenda is uh, executive session. And I do need a motion for us to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters and I believe litigation. Is that right, Mr. Doyle? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do I have a motion to go into executive session? So move, so move, Madam Chair. Okay, I, well, I heard Mr. Christmas over everybody, and maybe was it uh, <laughs> Ms. Williams or was it Dr. Anderson? It was me. I'll second. Okay. okay, so we have a motion to go into executive session, and I'll very quickly, I'll just go call the roll again. Ms. Bowles? Yes. Mr. Christmas? Yes. Yes for me, Ms. Williams? Yes. Dr. Haney? Yes. Ms. Baker? Yes. Ms. Hill. Yes. Dr. Anderson. Uh, she made the motion, so I'm going to take that as a yes. yes. And I had to unmute my mic. <laughs> okay. And Mr. Straker. Yes. Who, who has it right, as you all can see, he has that Atlanta Hawks hat on tonight. Hey, hey. Let's go home. <laughs> All right, at this time, we are going into executive session to discuss personnel and litigation. So board members, we need to, I believe we need to log out and go into another link. trying to get out the meeting. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
All right, I believe we are back from executive session. I believe that I see all of the board back from executive session where we discuss personnel and litigation. And at this time, I will turn it over to Dr. Beasley for personnel recommendations. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's no sound. Dr. Beasley, are you speaking? Yeah, my device now. I had to use another device. Okay. Thank you. I have one recommendation. We'd like to recommend Dr. Wanda Greenwood for the AP position at Souter Elementary School. Uh, I need a motion for the superintendent's recommendation of the assistant principal at Souter Elementary School, Ms. Baker. Yes, I'd like um, to move that we uh, support this recommendation of Dr. Wanda Greenwood to Souter as the AP. Thank you. Right, and a second. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to second the motion, please. Okay. It's been moved and seconded uh, by Ms. Baker and Ms. Bowles to accept the superintendent's 
recommendation of Dr. Greenwood as the assistant principal at Souter Elementary School. I am going to call the roll for the vote. Ms. Bowles. Yes. Mr. Christmas. Yes. Yes for Ms. Goree. Yes for Ms. Williams. Okay, thank you, Dr. Haney. Yes. Ms. Baker. Yes. Ms. Hill. Yes. Dr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Straker. Yes. And it is a unanimous vote for Dr. Greenwood. Is would she happen to be in the meeting? No. Good evening. Well, in the congratulations, board. Dr. Greenwood. Congratulations. Okay. All right. At this time, the next item on the agenda are announcements from Dr. Anderson. All right, everyone. Good evening, Madam Chair. Let me make sure I cut my, y'all know my phone's be over here making noises and doing everything, so I'm going to cut them down. All right. Good evening, Madam Chair, board members, district administrators, and citizens of Clayton County. Here are the announcements for the month of July. In addition to Independence Day on July 4th, this month observes passage of, of the Civil Rights Act, Global Forgiveness Day, World Listening Day, and National Parents Day. The district will be closed in observance of summer break, Monday, June 28th through Monday, July 5th. All schools and offices will reopen on Tuesday, July 6th. New teacher orientation is scheduled to begin on Monday, July 19th. Free planning days will begin on Monday, July 26th, and will continue through Friday, July 30th. The board work session is scheduled for Monday, July 26th at 6 o'clock p.m. with meeting location to be determined. The district will conduct virtu the virtual open house activities the week of July 26th. More information will be shared on all platforms as final details are completed. The district in conjunction with community partners will sponsor a back to school extravaganza on Saturday, July 31st from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. The extravaganza will be conducted as a drive-by trunk up event. Information regarding locations for the extravaganza will be shared on all platforms as those sites are finalized and students will return for the 2021-2022 school year on Monday, August 2nd, 2021. And finally, our next board meeting is scheduled for Monday, August 2nd at 6 p.m. with meeting location to be determined. Madam Chair and community members, that concludes tonight's announcements. Thank you. Madam Chair, I believe you're muted. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Doyle. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for uh, the May 24th board work session and the minutes from the June 7th board meeting. I have not, I believe everybody has perused those meeting the meeting minutes. I don't see any corrections. Does anyone have any corrections or additions to make to those minutes? I do believe I can see everyone now. Seeing none, we will accept them as presented. The next item on the agenda is updates to the board and I will turn that over to Dr. Beasley and Dr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we're going to provide the board a few updates. We'll toss it over to Dr. Simpson and School Leadership and Improvement. Thank you. Yes. yes, good evening. Thank you, Dr. Beasley. Good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, members of the board, superintendent, community at large. Just have a few updates regarding reopening our COVID updates, which I think are COVID-19 data updates, data updates, which I think is vitally important. Graduation report which is going to include the number of scholars, the amount of scholarships that our students earned 
uh, via associate degrees, graduation seals, et cetera, uh, new digital access information to be shared, testing data, and school year student and employee calendars. Those presenters that will follow me will be Dr. Lee, Ms. Johnson, Dr. Dunn, Ms. Dawkins, and Charles White. So at this time, at this time I'll turn it over to Dr. Lee. Okay, thank you, Dr. Simpson. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I will start by just providing an overview of how we will reopen schools in the fall. As you can see on the slide, all staff and students will return to daily in-person instruction at the start of the school year. And this is supported by our reduction in the community spread data, also our safety procedures that we have in place and the fact that teenagers and adults have access to a vaccination. And later you will hear Ms. Charman Johnson provide an update on our community numbers. Also on this slide, you see the daily schedule. This schedule is for students who are learning virtually as well as those students who um, will be turning to in-person learning. So I just want to reiterate, all staff and students will return to daily in-person instruction unless a student has been approved for the Virtual Learning um, Academy. At the bottom of the screen, we include our extending learning beyond um, the classroom days where students will be learning at home asynchronously um, nine of our calendar days. And so on these days, um, students, all students will remain at home so that instructional staff can engage in professional learning, um, data analysis, lesson planning, just all of those actions that will allow them to support students' opportunities to learn. Okay, on this slide, I've just highlighted a few of the items from our game plan, and Ms. Charman Johnson will go into more details regarding the operational features. But for instruction, when students return, we're expecting them to have um, many of their, to have their personal supplies so that can minimize sharing. And also um, during group work or lab resources, we're asking um, teachers when feasible to again, minimize um, students sharing um, resources and equipment and supplies. So even with our textbooks and supplemental resources, we're trying to um, ensure a one-to-one -one when possible um, for safety measures. And then we'll continue sanitizing, of course, those high touch areas. Regarding the Chromebooks, um, students in 312 will have the one-to-one -one Chromebooks and students in pre-K through second will have access to a laptop while at school. And we are encouraging students to have their own personal headphones as they um, return in the fall. Are there any questions regarding anything I've shared before I toss it to um, Ms. Charman Johnson? Uh, Dr. Lee, I actually have a question. I'm not sure if, if this would be on the minds of some of our other board members, but I know that we're saying that we're going to um, Go, everybody's face to face. The only thing about everybody being face to face is that our elementary schools had actually had practice with being face to face this year, but our middle schools and high schools did not. And I, one of the things that I, I'm worried about is how they are going to travel within buildings because, you know, with our elementary kids, you all had everything laid out and, you know, they would go one one way down the highway or whatever but now when you're looking at students that are going to have to go across the building for uh classes how are we going to address that and are we sure that maybe even though we're saying face to face do you think that there might be any consideration for maybe starting the first week off maybe in a hybrid uh situation and that might be more so for our um, high school, middle and high school students, since they have not actually been in the building. Has any consideration been given for that? And I saw Dr. Simpson unmute, but I do know that as a part of our game plan at the beginning of the school year, we really want to run those simulations so that our staff and students can practice. Of course, we'll have the markings, um, the signage, we had the video to show um, students and staff just on how to operate in the building, um, but we had not discussed um, a modified schedule for our middle and high school students. Dr. Simpson, did you want to yeah. add anything? Yeah, first, Madam Chair, uh, 
great thought. I mean, that is that is you know being very very forthright in thinking. Um, one of the things that and all of the schools do this. However, elementary have had that that opportunity for a dry run, but we asked them in in the beginning of the school year or at the beginning of the school year to create a standard operating procedure, and they actually will physically go through a process called a a day in the life of a student at their schools. And that is physically walking students or taking students through the process from, for an example, once they get off the bus, where they go from there. And so that that is the expectation for them to do so. However, it will be brand new to them on the first day. That's understandably so. Um, we'll have conversations, obviously, with the principals to make sure that we provide them with that information prior to the beginning of school or their return, whether that be via video or whether that be during open house. So we plan on staging a number of opportunities for us to be able to physically walk them through that process with all of the, the distancing measures and all of the operational uh, operational things that they'll need as it relates to, you know, not you're not being stacked up against each other, essentially, but but that is certainly the plan, and that is definitely a good thought and, and something that we're taking into consideration. Okay, because I I didn't know if maybe we might need to have you know when I meant I know one of my principals mentioned the fact that at the middle schools I think some students haven't you know they've never been in the building like our exactly our eighth graders our which would be our rising ninth graders they've never been in their high school buildings and our rising sixth graders they've mm -hmm. never been in their building so i don't know if maybe we might also just want to plan Those transition years yes yeah, maybe coming yeah. in yes i know just like you all are doing that advanced learning for all mm -hmm. maybe you all need to do an advanced uh you know protocol for all to duly noted have those Absolutely. kids yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Great point. Duly noted. Yes, ma'am. Any other board members have any questions? Madam Chair, um, yes, I just Chair. have one question. Um, how are we communicating this information to the public? Have we shared this on um, Infinite Campus or um, have we even shared it at all at this particular time? So we're, we're sharing our game plan elements this evening and then from here, all schools will have it, the information to use on their media outlets. Um, and then we'll, we're going to have a nice graphic that includes this key information that's shared with all parents. So Ms. Hill, it will be shared mm -hmm. uh, appropriately. We just, we're presenting yeah. it tonight though to you all. Yeah, it was. One more quick it, Yeah, it's uh, back to Ms. Hill and then Ms. Bowles. Yeah, we, the, the whole purpose of this meeting is just to share the information now with the with the public those that are listening and then we'll give further yes Ms. Bowles yes really I see this um awesome tracking and monitoring my question is about any testing opportunities that we're going to have on site either for students or or teachers next year okay and Dr. Collier are you on to respond to we'll continue to have those testing opportunities or a member from Student Support Services or Ms. Johnson? Yes, um, I spoke to Dr. Collier um, today and she is working, um, she and her team are working on um, having um, vaccination sites, um, perhaps in July and August for our students, but there's more information to come on that. But that is part of the plan, um, Ms. Bowles. Okay, awesome. It sounds like you said vaccin vaccination sites and I'm wondering about testing. Oh, you testing. Mean. Oh. For COVID-19. Oh, testing, testing for COVID? Yes, yes ma'am. To supplant our, you know, monitor our progress monitoring, we've got data about positive cases. And I'm wondering if we're testing um, or how we know or what our sources are. Yes. Or if we it, test our own. <clears throat> yes, Ms. Bowles, if I, may, if I may interject, the company that we partnered with, um, I guess it would have uh, dated back to probably March or April. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that is the same company that will continue with that testing going into the new school year. If I'm if I'm mistaken, then I'll I'll certainly communicate that to you. But I'm of the, I'm of the understanding that we will continue on with that that company that we use to provide the testing that's done so thus far. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
you all for your questions and suggestions. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Johnson to share our COVID-19 data, as well as our reopening operational expectations. Ms. Johnson. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lee. Um, good evening, everyone. I will provide you with an update on our most current data as it relates to positive COVID-19 cases within Clayton County and in our school district. During the week of June the 7th through the 11th, which was two weeks ago, we had 44 positive COVID-19 cases reported in Clayton County. We had zero positive staff cases and student cases reported. During the week of June the 14th through the 18th, which was last week, we had 48 positive COVID cases reported in Clayton County. We had one positive staff case reported and zero student cases reported. Now I will provide the reported positive cases per 100,000 Clayton County residents for the past two reporting periods. We have finally experienced six consecutive weeks where our data is being reported at less than 100 positive cases per 100,000 Clayton County residents. So during the last two week reporting period, which was June the 6th through the 19th, we had 42 positive cases reported per 100,000 Clayton County residents, which is a decrease from the 58 positive cases that were reported from the previous two week reporting period. Our positive COVID-19 cases per 100,000 Clayton County residents um, have continued to decrease over the past eight weeks, as you can see. All right. We have created, as Dr. Lee um, stated earlier, a CCPS operational game plan for school year 21-22. And we are still working on the plan. And once it is completed, we will share this with all of our stakeholders but it provides our stakeholders with information on how we will reopen our schools in August. I will highlight a few of those this evening and we will place this plan on the CCPS website and ensure that it is emailed to our parents prior to the start of school. So regarding the PPE and safety guidelines, students and employees will be encouraged to wear masks during the school day. We will still um, have our temperature check staff screening procedures, and building sanitization procedures. For nutrition services, the traditional lunch schedule will be utilized and the cafeteria and cafeteria tables will be sanitized between lunches. Our VLP students, which are our virtual learning program students, they will pick up meals at designated school sites. So we will provide meals for our virtual learning students. As far as visitors to the building, um, we will um, visitors will be allowed in the buildings by appointment only, and, we, and they will be required to wear a mask. However, um, we have said that, we did say that on the first day of school, we will allow parents to visit, um, drop off their students in the buildings, but they must wear a mask. As far as the bus goes, students will be encouraged to wear a mask on the bus, and the buses will be um, sanitized and clean between each route as they were this year. And regarding large gatherings, school programs will be held virtually and our middle school athletics will begin July the 12th. Now, Dr. Lee has already shared information regarding the instructional plan for next year, but now I'm gonna share some general information. Our elementary and middle school students will continue to wear uniforms. Um, for next year, and our high school students will follow the dress code provided in the student parent handbook. We will continue to provide campus kids at our school sites, and the school schedule for students will remain the same. Are there any questions? Okay, yes. Dr. Uh, Dr. I mean, Ms. Johnson, you said that the elementary students are going back to the uniform and you mentioned the high school students having the regular dress code. What about middle school students? Yes, the, I'm sorry, the elementary and the middle school students will continue to wear uniforms. Okay, Ms. Bowles, yes. I believe I heard you. Yes, I'm sorry to revisit this. Just on behalf of um, my constituents, there is still some lingering confusion. Will there or will there not be on-site COVID testing available for teachers 
and or students, yes or no? They're still, they were unclear on the answer the last time. There will be COVID testing available in the district, but it won't be at every site. So they'll have to go to specific locations. Thank you, thank you. All right. But well, we want to encourage everybody to take full advantage of all the testing opportunities that currently exist and continue to use those sites as well, because I don't think um, that the few sites that we have will support everyone. So we're working with the county and other vendors or providers. We want to encourage them to use, take advantage, take advantage of as many of those other locations as possible. Mr. Johnson? Yes. I, at this time, it's it's been a minute. You you went over the uh, the COVID information. I've actually forgotten the different phases that we had. I know that we've been in the red for so long. That was phase one, which were when everybody was virtual. And let's see, we made the yellow and we're in the green, but I, I will admit I was too lazy to go to go all the way back through the board. Uh, past board meetings to remember what 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 is phase three and because I know we have a three and four what what was phase three and what was four right so three that was um three was when all of the students um, are able to come back face to face mm -hmm. and we wanted to have six consecutive weeks where our numbers were at a hundred or fewer positive COVID cases per 100,000 so we we have made that um we we, we are there at this point in time the other thing I wanted to point out that you are, are mentioning that you're encouraging uh, these masks. Right now, since we're in summer school, we are, um, I think they are wearing masks. Is that correct? That is correct. We are okay, requiring so, masks for the summer school. Yes. Yeah. So I think that before we start posting encouraging the wearing of masks, now, with, with them saying that we have this, this Delta uh, variant, and I don't know why it has to be called the Delta variant, you know, because it seems like every time Delta gets attached with it, it's a disaster, like the, we had the little, you know, with the, <laughs> with the hurricanes last year. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the variant and whether or not we need to really before we actually say encouraging that we actually see where our numbers are at that time. Uh, because I'm just gonna be honest, if I were a teacher and I like, I have my underlying conditions as I told Dr. Beasley, uh, and we talk about optional, then you know it might be optional for me not to be in the classroom with uh, people face to face. So I, I think that we still need to still be taking into consideration And now that they have the vaccination available for students, you know, maybe even some of the students might do so. But I, I know I I'm still might be a little hesitant, you know, for my own children. But hopefully if we could get the adults vaccinated, that would really help us out a lot. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. All right, now we will hear from Dr. Dunn. She's gonna provide information on the graduation report and the um, digital access information. Good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, board members, Dr. Beasley, community guests um, and colleagues. Um, what I pre I'm presenting before you this, this after this evening, um, now on the screen here, um, is an update on our number of, the number of graduates, college acceptances, total scholarship awards, and the number of our graduates who um, finished with associate degrees. So between the months of, of August to May 2021, we um, Clinton County Public Schools graduated 3,013 students. Of those 3,013 students graduated, um, the students received a co collectively 1,875 college acceptances, total scholarship awards. This is inclusive of our uh, Posse Scholarship Awards as well as our Hope Scholarships and our uh, Quest Bridge Scholarship, Presidential Scholarships is $89.1 million. And we also have 41 of our students who were accepted, who, um, who completed school 
high school with associate degrees. So we um, that we saw a little bit of a decline in that because of our new board, our, our new policy, House Bill 444. But um, we were so pleased to at least have the 41 students to finish with that associate's degree. So we're very proud of our students. Yes. <laughs> very proud. <laughs> Yes, very proud of our students. Um, and we also had 81 students to graduate early. So we were completely, you know, that's our class of 2022 students who finished up this year. So uh, next, Dr. Lee or? Well, I want to brag on one of our board babies. I always okay. like to brag about our board babies. Miss Williams is not going to brag, but you know, her son was a semifinalist for the posse. Yes. And uh, he will be getting a full scholarship for for the tuition. So that's that's a good thing. And I'm just so jealous yes. of all of those students who receive those associate degrees. Yes. I think that we're not letting the, the public know. And because I'm going I'm to, you know, give a little shout out to Riverdale <laughs> High School. Yes. Oh, yes. I do believe that uh, Miss Miller Brown is still yes. the queen with yes, uh, yes. the associate degrees. And I think Dr. Beasley had told us a couple of years ago, her students can, um, they're, they're have them from DeBry University mainly. And yes, that, that group can actually come out and make about $60,000 starting salary without a high school diploma. Now, yes. me, on the other hand, when I received my degree in education way back when, and I started working as a mm -hmm. teacher, my first, I had a master's degree, my salary was $7,458. That's two degrees and being a teacher, $7,548. I will never forget it. So congratulations. And then I'm going to give a little shout out to the next school that's number two, I believe, I believe it might be North Clayton High School. No. <laughs> yeah, yes, right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma my school's up here yes, on this end of the county. Yes, I yes, want to. Okay, so I want to give that shout out. <laughs> yes, so they've done very well with the um, associate degrees and um, pursuing those aggressively. Um, and then we you know expanding partnerships as well to make sure that our students continue to have that option. So um, we're very proud of North Clayton as well as the, the Queen uh, Riverdale High School. So we're yes. very proud of them. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So our next um, slide uh, talks about our new venture with digital advertising to support and promote uh, registration and enrollment in Clayton County Public Schools. This is the first time that we've ventured into this uh, sort of advertising and it's done really well. Um, thus far, we began with our airport advertising. So um, based upon the information that we have, we're the second public school system to advertise in the um, Hartsville Jackson International Airport, and it seemed befitting to do so because we are, of course, Clayton County, and some of it is within our, our jurisdiction, so it would be nice for folks to know about our school system. So at the time of this information being shared, uh, the uh, our advertisements are visible, very nice advertisements in our north, south, and international baggage claim areas. 16 LCDs in our north baggage claim area, two uh, video walls in South Baggage Claim and two LCDs in our international baggage claim area. So some may say, why international? Well, we want to make sure that we're targeting, we're, we're reaching everyone and not just um, our uh, you know, domestic flight. So we're, we're very pleased with that. So we have about maybe 500,000, uh, close to a million, um, if not more than that, according to Clear Channel, is 5 million persons that have uh, actually viewed our advertisement. So we're very pleased with that. Next, so you can see it there, um, right there at the um, baggage claim. So um, we're very visible and it shows that same image is seen on all of the different little areas there for baggage, baggage claim all the way down. So we're very, very, very proud of this. And um, you know, kudos to our communications department and our leadership, district leadership for supporting our venture into digital advertising, especially in the airport. Ms. Bowles, I think you are a world traveler there. You want to comment on that? Well, I'm just really proud of you, Dr. Dunn, and um, our entire staff and comms team and Dr. Beasley for, you know, encouraging the idea. I was traveling recently through our airport and really, really enjoyed seeing our district well represented um, at the world's busiest airport. It's home. And so I enjoyed that and um, just want to thank you for what that's going to do for the culture of our uh, district, for the scholars and educators. 
You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're glad to be out there. This is this is awesome. And we appreciate your comments, Ms. Bowles. Um, and we extended it. So we didn't stop there because we understand that we want to make sure that we're marketing to different types of travel. So our next uh, venture is digital billboard advertisements. You can see our advertisements on 75 traveling southbound as well as north um, on both sides of the highway there. I mean, and it's really neat because I actually saw at 11 o'clock at night traveling south on 75 and I said, that's it, there it goes, we are there. Um, very bright and colorful and visible. And we wanted to target those areas where we could make sure we were um, hitting enough views. So you can see that we have what we have here, um, views by residents 18 years of age and older, that's our target population that we went after. So um, we're gonna say here, we have on a Terra Boulevard there, Battle Creek, 1,070,572 residents. So within a day, we can expect that many views with our registration. We have there I-75 South, Tara Boulevard, right there at the frontage road, 778,722. Um, I-285 South, I-85 Exchange, that was one of the a larger markets there, 605,153. Mount Zion Boulevard, 223,659. And these are our posters as well, in Old Dixie Highway and Mar Road, 272,005 residents. So, of course, the paper flyers still in use, Postcards, we're out there with those too, but this, in this way, we're actually assured that we, when we know that they're going to see it, you know, they're driving, paying attention to the roadway, but when that big sign pops up that's so colorful, it does capture the attention of the, of the driver. So, and that's an example of one. It's a little hazy because when this was taken, um, it was raining by, the, uh, by Clear Channel, the persons that actually put those up there. Um, or made sure that they were they were visible there. So we have our campaign, Clayton County Public Schools arrive and thrive at five. So we want the, our kindergartners to arrive and then we know they're gonna thrive because they are five years of age, they're starting school and we are ready for them to be with us. Next, okay. So in addition to that, again, looking at the different forms of travel, well, we want to make sure that we're capturing our MARTA travelers. So we will see our advertisements in MARTA in the, in the train stations as well as at the bus stops and on the bus themselves. So when you ride in the bus and you see the little postcards up at the top around the bus, you'll see advertisements for Clayton County Public Schools. It starts with committed to high performance, Clayton County Public Schools, we are registering for 2022 school year. So these are where we, where we are now. You may say Moreland Avenue, Rock Cut Road. Well, yes, because that's a bus that travels into Clayton County. So that's how we were able to, to pick selected bus, buses to make sure that we're, we're targeting our residents. So we are capturing 53,000 residents there, Tara, um, Tara Boulevard, Upper Riverdale Road, facing going southbound, 106,000, 121, Highway 85, Leesville Road, facing north, 132,000. So in each of these instances, just like with our form of travel with our airport and with our uh, car vehicle travel, we wanna make sure that we have the signs placed in strategic locations we can capture the greatest percentage of our population. So this is going to help us reach even more um, persons, those who are residents of Clayton County and also those traveling through Clayton County or those who are new to Clayton County. So we're very excited about MARTA, um, very excited about MARTA. This is, this is one of those ventures that we are very, very proud of. And our next um, form of advertising is digital, I mean, well, mobile. Now this is totally new um, and it's unique to Clayton. And so when we started looking at how this actually happens, it's through in your, it's in an app. So sometimes if, you, if you're using your cell phone playing games or looking at the weather or any of those different things, you're maybe looking at reading the news, CNN, you're getting your, your news updates with the big N if you have iPhones or what have you, you'll see advertisements pop up within your, whatever you're reading or whatever you're, the game you're playing. Well, you'll see our advertisement pops up, which is gonna say, Clayton County Public Schools is now registering for 2022. And it's at the bottom of the ad. It's really cute the way it is. Um, and, it's, and it's visible because you can't help it draws your attention exactly to what we're, we're advertising there. And one of the biggest um, reasons why we, we ventured into this area is because it targets our Hispanic population. So it has that overlay for language conversion. So that means we're gonna, uh, through this form of advertising, we're reaching 48% more persons, more residents of Clayton County than we would had we not utilized the digital um, the ads. So when you see all these folks on their, their cell phone, you know that we can't live without our cell phones. So we're gonna make sure that 
you know, while they're on the cell phones playing games or reading the newspaper, there's a, there's a likelihood that you're gonna see an ad from Clayton County Public Schools. Now this works while you're in Clayton County. So if you travel to the cab or to Henry or to Fed, then you're not gonna see it. But as soon as you enter into Clayton, then that's when it picks up. What this utilizes is called location intelligence. So that's how we're able to um, make sure that we're capturing only those residents and those travelers within the Clayton County proper, so within the jurisdiction. If you step one foot in the Fulton, then you're not gonna see it. So you have to be in Clayton, just remember that. You have to be in Clayton. You don't have to be a resident necessarily, but you have to be in Clayton when you're using your apps in order to see the um, advertisement. I you know, played around with it and I did see it. So we have it and we also have examples of what it looks like. This is um, just the marketing itself, but we do have it, um, it was in a football app, I think it was Atlanta Falcons. It was also in a game um, that was in, in Spanish. So, um, but it's there. So this is, we're really, really excited about this. Um, this is 21st century technology at, at use here to make sure we're meeting our, meet, meeting our families where they are. Um, and because of this, we, we have seen an increase. So this is what you can see here for Spanish, um, engaging our families there. That's one, this is actually a game. And then the next one, Oh, we didn't, we didn't put the other one yet. The other one was with a, a football, you know, with, with the, I think it was the Atlanta Falcons, it was another football team. So, you know, we're gonna, not only female <laughs> children, but also males. So we're very proud of that. So this is what we're, you know, money spent, making sure we're attracting our families and registering our students. So because of this, we have seen an increase in registration. So we're very proud of that. So this is all I have. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Don. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. You're creative. I, yeah, I was. I was. I couldn't find my keys, Dr. Don. I, I was. <laughs> I, I was. I, since I'm at home. <laughs> Good, job. Good job. Good <laughs> job. Thank you. We can take that ride, Miss Gory. I saw it on Terra Boulevard right by 75 when I was getting ready to go to the hospital. I said, "There it is. I see it." People probably thought I was crazy. So I was looking. Yes, it's there. So it, Thank we're you, Dr. out Dunn. there. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, Dr. You. Lee. Okay, and so our last two items are just in the board um, presentation. You all see the timeline for when our Georgia Milestones data will be available. Um, for now, what's coming in is for internal review. However, toward the um, end of summer, our state superintendent will let us know when it's no longer embargoed to share with the public. And at that time, we'll bring an update to our board in public. So just wanted to provide you all with that update. And lastly, I'll turn it over to um, Mr. White, Charles White, to share our teacher and student calendars. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, members of the board, uh, in the PowerPoint that we shared with you, we have two links there. Uh, one is for the 21-22 instructional calendar. This is the 180-day calendar for students as well as the 190 day calendar for teachers. It includes the nine extended learning beyond the classroom days. And then uh, the next calendar uh, that we have is uh, linked is the employee calendar. And as you can see, there is a broad number of uh, calendars for our employees. We have them rain ranging from 180 day calendars to 240 day calendars with a variety of starting and stopping dates. The important days to remember on our calendars is the fact that uh, administrative staff or 225 day employees will begin work in the new school year on July 6th. Uh, the SROs, our 205 day employees will return on July 22nd. Uh, the 190 day employees, those are teachers, media specialists and so forth, they will return on July the 26th. And as we have stated before, students will return for the 180 day instructional year on August 2nd. All calendars are posted on the website and are accessible on the website. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. White, can you put the calendar back up? Because I couldn't, I didn't, I don't remember seeing it in my packet, but one thing that I did want to make sure that we have adjusted um, next year, since since Juneteenth has been added as a, a, a national holiday, do we, uh, are, are our employees at work on that day? It looks like it's 
falling on a Sunday? Mr. No, White, is that what you're saying? Well, the the nineteenth of June will be on a um, on a Sunday, and this would impact our um, our employees, of course. Uh, that is uh, one question I cannot answer. You may want to uh, toss that to uh, Doctor um, uh, to Doctor uh, Wilson to whether or not that's being discussed by Human Resources, because I think that would be or uh, or compensation. Um, I don't know for sure how that would work out. That may adjust the last day for employees uh, who would be working as an additional holiday to be considered. Okay, well, I, I definitely want us to take that into consideration. And maybe, I'm not sure, I know this year we're doing, I think, virtual Fridays. But like, for example, this past Friday, I think we still had employees working virtually. I'm not sure how our summer school days, I don't know if we were in school on Friday or not, but since it, you know, it happened so quickly, we weren't ready for it. But I still think that, you know, that we need to recognize it as a holiday and we definitely need to make sure that we are, we have some type of, of activity um, through the school district that that honors Juneteenth. So uh, I want us to please keep that in mind. Are we uh, are we voting on this calendar this evening or what? The calendar has already been approved. Um, oh, well, we, it was approved back on the 29th of March. Okay, well, I think we're, we, not, we might need to revisit the calendar. Yes, ma'am. So, we'll, so we will definitely have uh, Mr. Dr. Wilson look at it and we I think we need to revisit the calendar because we want everyone to have that to have that holiday because just like the way we do the 4th of July now we are, we always shut the school district down for the week of the 4th and it doesn't matter where it falls cuz something it falls in, on the you know on the weekend or whatever we still are not uh we still make sure that we're out cuz I'm thinking this year the 4th falls on is it on a Sunday I'm not sure I'm not even sure yes Sunday Madam Chair, think, mm -hmm. yes. I think the the board the board uh, we can bring the calendar back, but I guess the question will be for the board to share. Do you want this to be a paid holiday, uh, or do you want us to, if we give up a day, do we, do we work another day? That's the question that the board has to answer. If you if 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 you're going to just shift, give us a day off that day, but then tack it on somewhere else, then. <laughs> That's a, right. That's well, right. No, I don't want to. I don't want to tack it off. I don't mind it being a paid holiday. Yeah, that's and that's what I'm encouraging. Well, the little lady walked something. all the way from Texas. She she, <laughs> she she walked. She did something I wouldn't do. I'm doing good to walk around the block a couple of times. So it'll be well well worth it to you know let it be a paid holiday because I know that the fourth is on a Sunday, but when are we when are we returning for work? Is it Tuesday the sixth? On the sixth. On the yeah. sixth. Right. So we're yes, yeah, so it's on the weekend. So we're we're gonna let everybody have that Monday off. So we need to make we're looking at the fourth of July. On the fourth of July, we weren't free. So but the difference to just to be clear, the difference with the fourth of July that 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 um that's not it's not a work day, in other words. I know it, but the, it's a federal holiday, and and the, and everybody's getting the that Monday off, aren't they? But it, right, but it's not it's not a paid holiday. It's not one about two hundred and twenty five days. That's what I'm saying. No, I get it, but okay. you know, but we could say people need to come to work on the fifth. Yeah, then you're gonna have to pay. You have to pay them for two hundred and twenty six right, days. We're, exactly, we're not doing that. So I just want us to make sure we do the same. That we take that into consideration for Juneteenth. I'm clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So we'll we'll look at that before we just get back with Dr. Wilson. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Madam White. Chair. Yes. This concludes all of our updates for um this presentation. Okay. Before you go, though, Miss Dr. Lee, could you tell me because I I should have sent this question in this morning. Can, can you all give us a number? How many students do we have in summer school, and how is that going? Uh, well, it's going well, and I can provide you with an update on how many students actually participated in all of okay. our camps. Okay. So you, if you can make, send, it, send us that information, if you can find it before the meeting is over with, 
Yes, I can. If you'll just in, interject it, please do that for me so that um, we can at least let the public know. Because I, I did look at another school district's uh, board meeting the other day. I saw they had a very large amount of students that were in. But uh, I just wanted to know, since we did have that discussion about what we were doing with our, our money with uh, Senator Ossoff uh, last week. Okay, I'll find out that information now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I believe that they said that's their last item. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda for action. And uh, so we are going to allow the staff to present their reports and then we will just vote on these at the end of the presentation. So I'm a, I will turn it back over to you again, Dr. Beasley and staff. All right. Yes, ma'am, we'll follow the agenda. We'll start with our first presentation. The financial report. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, Dr. Beasley, members of the Board of Education and community. Tonight, the Board of Education has for review the financial status of the district um, currently, the board can see that our year-to-date revenue is $428 million. Our expenditures are $354.9 um, million, with the current fund balance of $171.6 million. Are there any questions regarding the current financial status of the district? Okay, I'll move directly to our um, SPLOS revenue report. Um, as the board can see, um, the amount of revenue that we received the month of May is 4.7 million. And you can see the comparison to um, last year um, this time. Are there any questions regarding the revenue report? Okay, so we'll move directly to the, um, the purchasing report. And so I don't have a, um, a screen for that piece, but the board has for review the purchasing report. You have report A, B, and C. Um, report A and B is for the board's information only. Um, and report C are our contract reports, which requires the Board of Education approval. Um, those amounts, those contracts amount are 50,000 or more. And we have a total of 14 that's on the report. So if there are any questions regarding any of these reports, I can answer them at this time. Uh, Ms. Benton, actually I do have a question but it's, it's really not a question for you. Okay. Because you all know that I see dibbles on this report and everybody knows my feelings about dibbles. And Dr. Beasley is telling me to be patient but what I don't see on this report is Orton Gillingham. So that would actually be a Dr. Lee question and the and, uh, the ELA department, I'm just, well, this is not really a question. I'm just going to say that I'm, I, I'm hoping that I'm going to see that on the contract very soon. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, noted. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone else, anyone else have any questions? I have a question, but if, if I could do a quick shout out, I would like the opportunity. Just um, wanted to shout out the finance team and Ms. Benton from last week. We had a finance meeting in anticipation of our board meetings. Again, I think everyone um, within the sound of my voice knows that I would prefer if it were a finance and budget committee, but in the absence of a formal committee, I'll take these check-in meetings and um, hope that you know that they're helpful, especially to help unpack um, reporting, data, um, and preempt board questions. So really enjoying that space and all that y'all are doing to um, try to enhance our, our finance structures. So that was all, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bowles. So um, that's it for me. I do have a, um, there's another item, Madam Chair, that's on the agenda, it's down for the business, uh, on the business agenda. So I can talk about that at this time, or you know, the board may already be clear 
on those items. So, well, I'll, I'll just let us follow the. Um, yes. Just we'll just follow the agenda because it's I th we need that vote, and uh, and I also want to thank um, the thank you for the meetings uh, as. Uh, I was glad to see more participation from the board members in, in, in joining you for the um, for the meetings that we have because I personally think that they might be a little bit more effective than a so-called committee, although we, we may address uh, the committee in a different manner going, going forward, but I like the way we are meeting in the small groups and I was glad we had a more participation this time. So I was glad to see that. So thank you for that. So yeah. we'll we'll just uh, just follow the uh, the agenda. Next, we'll have our next report, Sploss. I'm sorry. Uh, but wait a minute, before you go to that, oh, okay, Ms. Benton, she, she would do Sploss. Okay, go ahead. Or right, is the K-5 language arts? supplement is that under it's, purchasing it's under purchasing yes ma'am mm -hmm. and also the community in schools so those yes, are just so. those are supplemental reports but still a part of purchasing report yeah but i would like to have a little information <coughs> since we do have dr lee's name under the k-5 we need to i would like to understand the more about that those resources and i would like dr dunn to discuss the communities in schools Okay, so I'll start, Ms. Benton. Um, so, um, Madam Chair, we are at the end of our textbook adoption for our elementary language arts series. It ended this past school year. So our current workbooks or supplemental resources are out of print and will not be printed. So our students will not receive consumable workbooks that go along with our current textbook series, um, Imagine It and Reading Wonders. We met with the um, vendor partner, McGraw-Hill, and what we found is that if we purchase the current resources, they align to our current, our current textbook that we're implementing with Imagine It and Reading Wonders. So to get us through this year, as we undergo an adoption, we need to purchase the workbooks as well as provide our teachers and students with online access to the digital resources. If we do not purchase them, our teachers and students will not have access to the digital resources that support the textbook and they will not have a workbook series. And next year, we plan to undergo an official adoption for um, the core textbook as well as any intervention program. So we're seeking special okay. approval to proceed with it. I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm gonna be in the affirmative. I don't want to hold up areas of my Orton Gillingham request. <laughs> so we we will vote <laughs> definitely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead, Miss Doctor uh, Doctor Dunn. Give okay. Us Communities and schools. Um. So we have um. It, we're, seeking to expand our um, school site, our communities and school sites to with adding on eight additional sites to bring us to a total of 16. And we focus on those uh, middle schools that feed into our high schools that have not yet reached the 80% or mid 80, mid 80% uh, percentage rating with regards to the graduation rate. So we wanted to increase our efforts to support our students in the middle school, um, thereby um, you know, having a more a stronger continuum of services that will follow the students from middle school into high school. Uh, at specific high school sites. So uh, we've, you know, that this is one way to do that. And we will target about a thousand extra students um, by the, through the expansion and um, add to those support services that uh, our students receive through communities and schools. Okay, the one reason not you to report on this, can you let the public know who will be uh, now getting communities and schools? For some reason, uh, stuff keeps I am losing on, on eboard. I don't know where these my items are going to. Yeah, I no, there was no support a document or attachment for that item. I was wondering the same thing, Madam Chair. No, ac no actually it was because I, I read it. I, I don't, it just seems like everything just disappeared. I, 
but but I, I know that there was because I read it. So can you share that information with the public, Ms. Dr. Dunn? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So that was, um, hopefully that was the MU that you received to, to look at. And then that just explains the continuum of services that will be offered to our students um, with regard to the individual caseload services and then the, the whole school support um, in, in like manner in, in terms of what happens right now. So we've been added our middle school sites. So we have Jonesboro Middle School that is an addition, as well as Sequoia Middle School, um, as well as North Clayton Middle School. Um, the Perry Learning Center is also a point to be a part of those the sites um, receiving those extra supports for communities and schools, and that would be our whole school for um, Perry Career Academy, excuse me, um, as well as Point South Middle School. Um, we may want to, again, make sure that we are building that continued team of services so that when our students receive support at the middle school, then that support does not stop. It, you know, it follows them over to high school. So um, to strengthen their efforts to be successful um, in graduating and also deters dropouts because we know that of course that communities and schools is a dropout prevention program um, and their tiered targeted supports have been really been impactful. So we added those eight additional sites onto um, our contract, our existing contract of our eight schools. Jonesboro High School is also the addition as well as a high school site to receive those support services. So, and that's critical for that area because of the, our students coming from Jonesboro Middle School into Jonesboro High School. So that was not in existence before. So that's gonna help Jonesboro High School as it works towards improving their graduation rate, continuing to improve the graduation rate, and also hoping to accelerate the performance of the students who will be a part of those caseloads and looking at the whole school support. With the Perry Center, we will um, work with those students who are actually in the Perry Career Academy, as well as our, our alternative school students to make sure that we are expanding our support services for our students there um, and helping them be successful in their post-secondary plans. Um, providing that wraparound support, that arm extension that is, you know, goes beyond the school day as well. So we're looking at continuing Lovejoy Middle School, which will now be Eddie White. So the services will go to Eddie White as opposed to being Lovejoy now, because of, of course that's not going to be the, the particular school site. And then we have Jonesboro High School, Jonesboro Middle School. We have Sequoia. We have North Clayton uh, Middle School, which feeds into North Clayton High School, as well as Point South. And I believe I mentioned the Perry Career Academy as well. So those are the additional sites um, for a total of 16. I may have missed one, uh, Ms. Gorey, but I will make sure that you all receive the, the list, um, the complete exhaustive list. We're looking at um, the expenditures of $120,000 per site. But again, right. um, it, it, it really is a good program to help deter dropout and to help working towards further increasing the school's efforts to improve their graduation rate. Uh, board members, I, I found it because I, it's if you all look under the purchasing the it's the supplemental purchase purchasing report it has uh, that's that's where it is Ms. Bowles and it's it's under uh, student support services and it's for the contract will be it's 1.7 million dollars so basically I wanted the public to know that we will now cover all of our high schools with the exception of 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 still well and uh and elite scholars and we are including the middle schools to most of our high schools so that, yes. that will help and i yes, want the public to know that some of the great things that uh communities in schools has done such as our you know uh food banks those type of things but in yes. particular one thing that they did for north clayton high school students two years ago we had students that needed one more class to, to receive their associate's degree and I contacted them and they actually paid because they had run out of money and they paid for I believe it was 16 students mm -hmm. to uh, get that pay for that last class and those 16 students managed to get their associate's degrees so it's it's a great program and I'm glad I'm, I'm, I was really glad to see that you have now included the middle school the feeder yes, schools because that would definitely thing too, help us. Ms. Gorey, um, that they also provide that, that you know, with the parent engagement, they help yes. us to, to increase parent engagement and, and supporting the family. So that's been a real big um, advantage point from communities and schools as well. Yes, ma'am. That's So now I see, I knew I had read it somewhere. <laughs> I just couldn't remember. I was like, how did it just disappear? Okay, thank you, Dr. Thank Dunn. You're welcome. All thank you. from the middle schools. <laughs> Who said that? Ms. Victoria. I said, how are we choosing with the middle schools? It's the middle, middle school. Go ahead, Ms. Gorey. No, you go ahead. 
The middle schools that feed into the high schools that have the um, the graduation rate in the 70 percentiles, the 70 like 70 percent or above, and I have not reached 80 percent. Um, that's how they were selected in the Perry Career Academy. Um, you know, the, the students that are served there because they're coming from the different schools and making sure that the services follow the students. So if they're coming from a CIS school, and now we have a CIS um, site coordinated at the Perry Career Academy to address the needs of those students. So that's how the middle schools were, were selected. Okay. Ms. Williams, the middle schools are Forest Park Middle that feeds in the Forest Park High School that already has it. Jonesboro Middle School is now is one of the schools. Jonesboro High School had not been one of the schools. So now it's both Jonesboro Middle and Jonesboro High School. And then Eddie White actually, well, Lovejoy Middle actually had it, but it feeds into Lovejoy High School. So now they also have it and it, they will include um, North Clayton Middle, and as she said, Point South Middle. I didn't hear I mentioned Forest Park Middle at first. Okay. Rid no, Rid I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, it's if you look in, it's like I said, if you'll look under the supplemental, look under the supplemental uh, report, and all of them are listed there. Okay. Also, Eddie White. I mean, Sequoia Middle School, and all of these are very, and, and especially the Perry Center. And one last thing too is that we're starting with sixth grade. So that we can actually see the benefit of building those skill the skill set from sixth, seventh, and eighth, so that they're ready when they go into high school. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Beasley. You received the SPLOS construction update for the month of June. Three payments were made, totaling $5.9 million. There were no change orders for this month. Are there any questions regarding the report or ongoing projects? I don't have a question, Mr. Joseph, other than I think now we need to go ahead and get that date for the ribbon cutting at uh, Michelle Obama. We were hoping that the first lady would be uh, joining us, but my the information I received is that because of COVID that she's actually tr holding off visits for another year. So. Hopefully, after we get the school up and running, and it's a beautiful facility, uh, that she will join us next year. Okay. That's I will what work I heard. with I will work with the principal and uh, communications to uh, get the event scheduled and uh, notified to all. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Wilson, personnel changes report. Yes, good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, other members of the board, Superintendent Beasley, and community members. The personnel changes report summarizes all personnel actions for the period of May 14th through June 9th, 2021. As of the report, we are about 90, a little over 90% staffed. Uh, for the same reporting period last year, we were about 88.8% .8 staffed. Um, of note, what you will not see on this report are teachers who are being hired for the upcoming school year. Their start date is not till July 26th, so they will not show on the report that you have before you, but they are being counted in the 90% uh, staff percentage that I gave you. They're just not reflected on the report. Um, principals still interviewing, communicating with us, recommending candidates. Um, on a daily basis. I wanna thank them for the, the great job that they're doing. Um, we do have one more job fair scheduled at this point and may schedule others as needed um, for June 24th, which is an ESOL job fair in dual language, visual arts and music uh, to try to get some content specific teachers um, in those areas. Um, a quick update on the Grow With Us initiative. Um, as you're aware, this is an initiative with a collaboration of DES, professional learning, and HR, whereby we would take uh, pretty much classified employees who are not currently teachers to work with them and support them so that they may become classroom teachers. Um, pleased to report with this being a first year initiative, we do have 16 individuals who have been recommended for hire. So this is something that we're going to certainly continue to do and try to enhance it for next school year and have more opportunities for our employees um, for career growth. 
And then lastly, on page four of the personnel changes report, there's a report uh, comparative results from the mid-year survey and the end of year perception survey. The mid-year survey was administered in November uh, through December 2020, and the end of year uh, perception survey report was uh, survey was issued in May 2021. Uh, overall, the results remain consistent between each of the administrations. And the results from the surveys will be used to develop uh, school-based and site-based uh, retention plans that will be implemented for the upcoming school year. And uh, as a part of those plans, it will uh, consist of uh, schools and departments doing state interviews, as well as addressing onboarding practices, which is very critical to the retention of your employees. So if they start off good, understanding what their roles and duties and responsibilities are, they tend to stay longer. And the plan will also uh, incorporate staff recognition uh, throughout the schools and departments. Uh, that concludes the personnel changes report and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, Dr. Wilson, right there, I think the only thing we need to do is give you an assignment about uh, looking at the calendar for our personnel in regards to next year with the Juneteenth date. Uh, we were trying to see whether or not, uh, how we how that would affect our employees workload. So we'll just let you look at that and you can get back with us on it. And we'll, yes, and we'll collaborate it. with the respective departments and we'll, we'll take care okay. of it. Okay, all right, thank you. Are there any questions, board members? Okay, at this time, I believe we have we have completed the consent agenda and we, we will have to take action on it this evening. So I am going to need a motion for the consent agenda and that includes the financial report, the SPLOS revenue report, the purchasing report, which includes the contracts and those the other two items, the special approval for the K-5 language arts and the communities and schools, uh, the SPLOS construction report and the personnel changes report. Do I have a motion for uh, the consent agenda? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Second. Thank you, Mr. Christmas. It has been moved and second that we, for approval for the consent agenda. I will call the roll for the vote. Uh, Ms. Bowles. Yes. Mr. Christmas. Yes. Uh, yes for Ms. Gorey. Ms. Williams. Yes. Dr. Haney. Yes. Ms. Baker. Yes. Ms. Hill. Yes. Dr. Anderson, I believe, had to leave the meeting. And Mr. Straker. Yes. Okay, so the vote, that's an 8 0 vote in favor of the consent agenda. Thank you all so much. Okay, the next item on the agenda is board matters. And there are a few things that I want to discuss. Uh, this past week, uh, well, not this past week, last week, the board attended the Georgia School Board Association. Uh, conference in Savannah. It was really good to actually be able to see some of our colleagues again face to face since COVID has had everyone on lockdown. Uh, we do need to finish our uh, GSBA rating. Uh, we have an extension due to COVID. It will not uh, be necessary to turn it in until September, but I'm going to try and make sure we turn it in next month. But I just want to remind all of our board members, I will have Dr. Rump Carter check your, uh, your professional development to make sure that everybody has met the requirement that we need in order to maintain our status. Uh, at this time, there is, I want us to, I want to go back and I will be sending an email. One of our duties as a board is oversight. And I had mentioned this to you before, since we're almost at the end of the year and we have gone through our budget process and all of that, I just want to let, I'll let everybody that's listening, the board members and for our uh, employees, I will be submitting to Dr. Beasley questions that, I am, that we would need to uh, ask. I'm going to, a sign or I'm going to, well, I want to sign, I'm going to give a, send an email to all of our board members and we are going to actually set up a meeting with 
the different departments such as the HR department, the um, CFO, the business department, whatever. What we want you all to do is to give us an overview of your department. We would like for you, for it probably not to be longer than 10 minutes at the most, uh, so that we know know what your department does. And uh, we will ask you three questions and each, each of the board members will select a department and then we will compile that information. Also share it amongst ourselves so everybody knows what happens throughout the school district. And, uh, and then we will just basically get some data from, for ourselves to, to say that we had oversight. And in particular, one of the things that we will ask everybody is probably about the budget and the role that everyone plays in uh, their budget. I'm, I'm very proud of, uh, of the budget that we passed this year, because as I said, I look, looked at another school district's board meeting the other day, and someone called me today asking me about the raise and the steps. And as I was looking, one of the things that we were trying to do in Clayton County was to improve the salaries of some of our lowest paid employees and one in, in uh, particular are our paraprofessionals. And I think that our salary for our paraprofessionals right now might be around $20,000. But as I was watching this other school district's board meeting the other day, and I will not call the name, but I will say that I found out that they only pay their parapros $13,000 a year. So we're out. So I, I, I was just appalled that they were only making thirteen thousand dollars a year for the for such a, a job that entails so much responsibility. And I know that we're trying to raise those salaries for our employees. As a matter of fact, we also have our learning, a professional learning department where we're even trying to help some of our uh, paraprofessionals even get a certification to actually go in the classroom and be teachers. So. Um, I'm, so I was actually very proud of that. And it seemed like in most instances, we were doing a lot better than uh, some of the other school districts, although uh, our employees don't seem to realize uh, some of the things that we're doing for them. But now the other thing is I do want to form a committee at this time. And that is going to be as the board chair, I can call for a committee and I'm going to uh, have a student achievement committee because one of the things that I, I really feel like that we must address is student achievement and more so due to the fact that we have been in a virtual learning uh, situation for almost uh, for you know a year plus three months from from March of last year almost to all of this year. And I and one of the things when Senator Ossoff came, of course, he talked about the CARES money and he talked about everybody keeps talking about so-called learning loss. But I do think that Dr. Beasley made a good point when he said, uh, pointed out that our students don't necessarily have learning loss, but uh, we are and we're focusing on acceler acceleration this year. So I want to form a student achievement committee. Now I have been talking to some of the board members and I'm, I'm going to call the names of three people that have actually reached out to me and wanted to do this committee and I'm willing to uh, you know add any more but in particular uh, particularly uh, Miss Hill, Sabrina, Ms. Sabrina Hill and Dr. Haney and Miss Williams are three people. I know that I believe that Miss Hill and Miss Williams are actually having a meeting this week because they were very inspired by the um, by what some of the things that they learned at GSBA. And I know that Ms. Bowles has been asking for committees. And so, uh, like I said, those three people in particular, I'm interested in. And if there are any other people that want to join that committee, please let me know and I'm going to add you. But I wanted to start out with that. And I'm, I'm saying this now because it's forming the committee we would be working with Dr. Lee and uh, you know some and some of the staff because I think that we going forth we we really need to have more information on a monthly basis regarding 
uh, how student achievement is going in the district and particularly how the board can help in, um, in, in raising our scores. Because well, I know that I get tired of hearing people talk about uh, the grade that our school district has when there, there are so many things that we're doing in Clayton County Public Schools that other school districts aren't doing. And yes, the, you know, right now the grades aren't overall aren't looking that good, but we're doing so many great things in this county. And uh, I, I want to see us progress once that, you know, we're on the path of getting things back to normal. So we will be uh, speaking with Dr. Beasley about uh, staff members within the school district that will be a part of that committee. And we will try to make sure that we schedule those meetings, maybe monthly or maybe every other month, but we'll work those details out. So uh, those are three people in particular. And I, like I said, I'm anybody else that wants to join, uh, I definitely would want you to, to, to get on the committee. Um, please count me in, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, okay. I also look forward to revisiting the policy you're referring to. Um, as board chair, I'm excited you are calling this committee, but I also think um, we get to ideate together about how this looks moving forward. But please add me to the Academic Excellence Committee, and I want to replug um, what is a fervent community-led request for a finance committee. But thanks for all you're doing as the first step. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I hear what the community wants. I, you know, and the and I'm sure, and we will involve the community. But the uh, this is, I'm going to say this is the board of education, uh, and we are going to do what is best for the students and try to include everybody in the uh, in in what we're doing. So we're going to start off our, our charge as board members is student achievement. So that's what that is really a focus that we're going to work on. And right now, as far as the community is concerned, as they actually are, they have their own committee as far as the budget process is concerned. We may we definitely need to tweak it, but we right now we we need to we need to drive this engine based on what the Board of Education wants. Not trying to leave out the public, but we're going to do our due diligence first. And we would definitely be open to adding them as a part of the committee. And I don't believe that we have any other board matters to discuss at this time, other than the fact we will be looking at probably having a call board meeting and we will let the um, superintendents and uh, assistant know when that meeting will happen so that it can be published. The next items that we have on the agenda, again, this, this will be a, it's a part of the business agenda and we will uh, have action on that this evening. So the next item would be the policy series G. This is a second read and, and now it is, it is time to vote on this, on policy series G. Do we have anything that needs to be added? One inquiry, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, perhaps this is a question for the policy team or committee wanting to be corrected if I am incorrect. Does this policy or the revision limit employees to three sick days per year when they accrue about 15? Uh, let me see. Is Miss, um, I believe Miss Miss Garrett is on here, but, I, but I, we don't limit, to my knowledge, but I will let them speak. We don't, I, I don't think we, question. there's no limit on sick yeah, leave, go ahead. Question, Madam Chair, Valerie Henderson may be here for other questions, but uh, Mrs. Bowles, to answer your question, no, it does not limit uh, the employee's leave accrual. It actually adds a leave opportunity for employees. Thank you, that's a constituent question. I think they will be glad to have answered uh, during tonight's meeting, thanks. Sure. Uh, Ms. Bowles, you mentioned the constituents. Could you, I, I'm not sure, I guess they are sending you a text message or something. Could you tell your constituents, and this is for any constituents that are listening, because uh, we we do put these, the all of these policies are placed, and I guess we need to 
go back. I'm glad that you did mention that about the constituents. Uh, I'm going to make sure that before we do any more policies, that somewhere on our website that we place the way that this procedure goes. All in, uh, every uh, the public has input. They're supposed to have input on the policies. So if they have questions uh, going forth, I'm not sure. Let me see if Miss Garrett, Miss Garrett, what what would be the next policies that are coming up for review? The next policies that are coming up are D, E, and F. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So and my apologies. Good evening, everyone. Oh, no problem. So the next policies, you said D, E, and F that are coming up? Yes, ma'am. After we, this. When, okay, those would be the next policies, which I'm assuming would be, would be, it will be on e-board. And see, the public has access to e-board. So those policies will go on the next, our next meeting will be at the end of, of July. So that will actually be the first read for the board and for the public. So what I need the public to do is to make sure they read the policies and, and they are welcome to send us any input that they have on the policies. That has actually been one of the problems. I have not received any input from any of the public in the past couple of years. We used to have input, but I think what we need to do, we need to have a place on our website so that the public knows that they can um, give us any um, opinion that they have on it, or you know, if they have any questions, so that you know those questions can be answered. So yes, but, they, and, but they, should on, have, they have input. Yes, they do, and on the web page, on the front and the banner on the left side, it does indicate to individuals that there are pub, uh, policies that are out for review, and that link will take them to eBoard. And we have actually received. Uh, input from the public, and we've mm -hmm. actually incorporated those changes. So when you guys get those uh, first and second read, it has those changes in there if there are any that come in from the public. And most of what we've been receiving are just comments that indicate that act, uh, actually um, they this is something that they like or they need it. It hasn't been anything that's really changed it. And mm -hmm. uh, there have been some questions where we've actually provided them with clarification, but there it is on the web page and it does link them to eBoard where they actually uh, can actually put their comment and they can send their comment to us directly. Right, but I think that we probably need to make it a little bit more user friendly because just like the constituent is asking Ms. Bowles this question now, I don't, I'm gonna be honest with you, I find our website hard to navigate because I know that sometimes uh, I don't know who ch I know I had a fit one day when it was when the I go to the board page and it was moved so I can understand if they have a question and, and you're saying that it's coming to the website but see that in there lies a problem because you know where that is on the web page I don't know that as a board member and I haven't seen those questions. So it would be nice if it was a way that whatever those comments were, that the board was actually seeing those as well. Because I'm not, I'm not, I don't even know where to look to, to be honest with you. So we do need to do a little bit better as the um, as the board to let the public know that they should, you know, provide us input and if they have any questions, uh, you know, to let us know. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're on the G policy. And Ms. Bowles, back to, to that question. Can you give me a little bit more insight on what the person was asking about? Too? Yeah, I'm glad you asked because um, just now we had a, a, a light conversation about how we can enhance our, our policy like access for community members. And I think that's an important conversation. I just don't want y'all to think that's what I was referring to. I do think our um, policies and same way Madam Chair just outlined, like having community input online sounds great. Um, this was just a constituent who reached out to their board member about policy, which is certainly within you know, normal actions of policy review processes and partially probably how they raise their voice. So in the absence of like a chat box or something, if they email me on the day of a board meeting, that's kind of where this came from. So there was no additional context except 
um, wanting clarity. And it looks mm -hmm. to me, based on the question, that they read the policy. They weren't asking what the policy said. They were asking for clarity, which is, I think, part of our job here. Um, yeah, and you did for that. sure. Yeah, yeah. Did that. Yeah, especially on that one, uh, because, right. you know, I have an issue with sick leave. I definitely don't. If I have accrued sick leave, uh, I definitely think it should be used because that was another thing I noticed in the other board meeting that there is a policy at the, in a, another district against people being able to use sick leave. So uh, so that was really what I was trying to find out the context. All right. Well, I'm going to move that we uh, I'm going to make a motion to accept the policy G series G. Do I have a second on that? So moved, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Straker. So it's been moved and seconded that we accept the policy series G. I'm going to call the roll for a vote. Ms. Bowles. Yes. Mr. Christmas. Yes. Ms. Gorries, yes. Ms. Williams. Yes. Dr. Haney. Yes. Ms. Baker. Yes. Ms. Hill. Yes. Uh, I believe Dr. Anderson left the meeting. Uh, Mr. Stryker. Yes. Okay, it is a 8-0, and that's approved. So the next item is the strategic improvement plan. That would be Dr. Wiley. Good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, members of the board, Dr. Beasley. I'm honored to bring to you education one through 2026 mission, belief statements, and goals. The statements are posted to eBoard, so I will not read them tonight. I would like everyone messages, but I would like everyone to know that, we, that the board completed because this is, in my experience, the very first time we've had all board members participate in the various conversations. And to me, that shows their commitment to our district. We had the opportunity today to review the vision statement to determine if it needed to be changed to eliminate some of the twos in the statement. Dr. Lee, Dr. Lee reviewed the statements and thought it would be best to leave it as is. He said the recommendation of the superintendent that the Board of Education approve the vision, mission, belief statements, and goals for the 2021-2026 years. It is our understanding that revisions may need to occur depending upon the needs of the district and the community. After the Board of Education votes on the statements, the district's internal team would then review and revise the strategic improvement plan to ensure we are working towards the vision and the goals of the Board of Education. And I'll take any questions at this time. Well, I don't really have a question for you. I would like for all of the board members to look at the vision statement. You know, we all, met with Dr. Wiley and we all agreed on it, but is it just, is it, maybe it's just me that look at the beginning of the, of the statement. I, I had asked her to look at what it says. It, it has all those twos in it. It says the vision of Clayton County Public Schools is to prepare our graduates to have skills to pursue and accomplish college post-secondary training and our career opportunities in order to live and compete successfully in a global society. It, it just, for some reason, it just seemed like it didn't flow quite right. Is it just, maybe it's just me. Madam Chair. Yes. I, I, I see what you're saying. Um, I'm looking at our strategic goals and I you could you could start each one of those sentences with just the word increase, um, recruit, create. You don't have to have the two. It, it's not a it's not a sticking point for me, but I do understand what you're saying. But no, not the strategic goals. OK, uh, I'm, come, I'm talking about the, the read the vision statement. Let me get back to that. I think it 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 pretty much says what we want. You know, we do what we want them to have the skills. But I'm just saying, it just seems like it's it's too many twos right in there after is to prepare. If you all are looking at that, I'm, we're we're, can, we're gonna vote on it, 
I mean, if it's all right, then we can go ahead and just approve it. But I just wanted you all to look at it because I didn't know if it was just me that was having a problem with all those twos right there. Well, I don't necessarily, um, I certainly have thoughts on the vision, but we've been through, this is the end of the process and I wanna respect the process, but the V, I do see kind of a V missing, having V skills to pursue. Um, oh yeah, okay. But that's maybe one way to help the sentence, Madam Chair. Is to prepare our graduates to have the skills. Yeah, that that maybe that's what it is, Miss Bowles. I think the is missing. I need that note. Where's Doctor Lee? I'm <laughs> Come on, here. Dr. Lee. Um, turn it, Madam Chair, turn that yes. camera back on. Okay. Yes, the the <laughs> was there previously. I think it's just an omission. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, the was there initially. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, so we need to insert a word there. So is it? So can we just go ahead and approve it? I mean, we'll insert the right there. Is that what's missing? Yes, the yes. skills. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, do we need to vote on this? I'm gonna ask Mr. Doyle, I did, or since the board uh, met with Dr. Wiley and we pretty much approved it, are we, can we just, do we need to vote on this or is it all right as is? Yes, ma'am, it's on the business agenda for action. I believe a vote would be needed. Okay, so we'll, 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 we'll go ahead and vote. I, I move that we accept the strategic improvement plan as presented by Dr. Wiley with the inclusion of the word the. I second. Out. Okay, the, I, there was a second from is Miss Baker or Miss. Okay, Miss yes. Baker. Okay, let me call the roll very quickly. Miss Bowles. Yes. Mr. Christmas. Yes. Jesse Gorey. Yes. Miss Williams. Yes. Doctor Haney. Yes. Miss Baker. Yes. Miss Hill. Yes. Mr. Straker. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, the next item is the tentative adoption of the fiscal year 2022 millage rate. Right? That will be Ms. Benton. Good evening, Madam Chair. Um, so just very quickly, um, the board, I believe the board already has this information. We presented it before. And so I've included um, an executive summary um, for the Board of Education regarding the tentative millage rate. And so as the board is aware, because we've talked about this uh, in a number of settings, um, the current budget, which was approved by the board earlier um, this month um, in June was built on a millage rate of 20 mils. And so um, the recommendation is that we continue the 20 mils into the 2022 budget um, year. And so I just wanted to share again with the public um, the millage rate for all of the metropolitan district. And of course, this information came from the Georgia Department of Revenue and school websites. And so you can kind of see what the millage rate is. And you can see Clayton County at 20 mils, and that's for this current year. And so um, just very briefly, I also wanted to just quickly highlight um, just for um, our community on what um, what that means for us. And so as we look at some of this surrounding district, and so I really want um, everyone to pay attention to this local column here, because this is the money that we raise locally and that the millage rate is built on. And you can notice uh, kind of where Clayton County lands. Um, and so it's 165 million compared to um, some of our metropolitan district in terms of the amount of money that they collect. Uh, from local taxes. And so, um, and this is the number of FTEs um, for all of the districts. So um, the board has at this time, the executive summary and the additional information we provided in the executive summary. I can answer any questions that the board has at this time. Uh-oh, are there any questions? Do I have a motion for the tentative adoption of the millage rate? 
Madam Chair, did we accept a tentative adoption for the millage rate um, presented by Ms. Benton? Okay. I second. Second. All right, I have a motion by Ms. Hill and a second by Ms. Baker to, to uh, adopt the millage rate. Okay, I'm gonna call the roll for the vote, Ms. Bowles. I'm going to abstain. Okay, Mr. Christmas. Yes. Yes for Ms. Gorey. Ms. Williams. Yes. Dr. Haney. Yes. Ms. Ms. Baker. Uh -oh. Yes. I'm about to go out, y'all. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ms. Hill, did I get you? Yes. Uh, Ms. Mr. Straker. Yes. Okay, that is seven in favor and one abstention. Do you want to state your abstention, Ms. Uh, Ms. Bowles? It was just kind of an unanswered question. And to be honest, Ms. Vinton, I'll ask it, but no expectation to answer it. I'm just curious about just, I know there's some research about states, right, that have this exact scenario where county by county, because of our um, tax, you know, pull, some counties get a lot less than their neighbors. And some state legislators have what's called tax equalization grants or tax equalization districts. And so, that's part of why I'm saying this. I look forward to learning more about that, either through you or my own research. But I'm curious about how what does Georgia do to address such huge gaps between county and county? Is all the pressure on districts like ours to solve these problems? Or does the state legislature have any equalization grant opportunities um, that they do with the annual budget allocations in the DOEs? I know some states do that. I don't know what ours does. So um, currently, um, the state of Georgia does have an equalization grant, and Clayton County, of course, receives an equalization. Um, and our grant for the 22 budget, I want to say it may be about 65 million, um, which is an increase from um, from our current year of about seven million. Um, but even with that, what, what that tells us, if the state is using the equalization grant and we have such an increase, that tells us that our wealth uh, per resident is going down in this, in the county. Um, that, you know, even 65 million, you can see the disparities um, between the metropolitan district, even with the equalization, of course, we're grateful um, that the state has such a program, it still really doesn't, be, it still doesn't address what our needs are. Thank it you. helps, but it doesn't really address the full needs. Question, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Stryker. Ms. Bennett, is it is it true that um, uh, a lot of that disparity is because of um, business income? Clayton County has a lower business income tax income than um than the other counties that were highlighted absolutely that that's part of it and then also when you think about um, um the number of residents that we have and of course of course the cost of um, an average residence in clayton county you know that impacts it also but definitely the number of business that we have i mean when you think about um the businesses that are in Fulton County, the businesses that are in, you know, the city of Atlanta and those schools, you know, they receive a lot of revenue from a lot of different businesses. And when you think about the fact that we have the airport sitting right here in Clayton County and we don't get a penny off of it. Correct. I think that's what the what, what we should be going after is debt revenue. And so we'll see what this legislation session does um, in regards to that. Okay, do, are there any other questions? Okay, well, we've almost, we're almost at the end. We, we don't, we will not be discussing, uh, we took the Omega charters off of the agenda. So the last item on the agenda is the Utopian Academy of the Arts Charter High School. Dr. Lee, did you want to say anything about that? Okay, so um, we're bringing a recommendation on behalf of the Charter um, School Review Committee um, for Utopian Academy. So I'll just turn it over to Jackie to bring the recommendation. 
Hello, thank you, Dr. Lee. Good evening, board. You've received the charter petition materials and the executive summary with the recommendation for a charter school seeking to operate in Clayton County Public Schools for the 2022-2023 school year. The Charter Review Committee recommends approving the charter petition for the Utopian Academy of the Arts High School petition. Are there any questions I can answer at this time? Seeing none, I, I will move that we accept the recommendation of the of the uh, committee to for the Utopian Academy of the Arts Charter High School. I second, second the motion. Second, second the motion. Okay. It's been moved and seconded by Mr. Straker, and I will call the roll for the vote, starting with Ms. Bowles. Yes. Uh, Mr. Christmas. Yes. Yes, for Ms. Gore Ms. Williams. Yes. Dr. Haney? Yes. Ms. Baker? I abstain. Okay. Ms. Hill? Yes. Mr. Straker? Yes. Okay, we have seven yeses and one abstention. Do you want to state any, uh, any make any statement regarding your abstention, Ms. Baker? Um, I just had some unanswered questions and I didn't want to stop the vote. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, that motion passes and I believe Mr. Doyle looked behind me and make sure we've covered all the items. Okay, I believe we have covered all the items and board, I wanna thank you all so much for hanging in here. Well, I will say before everybody starts leaving, I'll just, is there anything that any of the board members would like to say before we go, since this, this will be it for the fiscal year? Looks like none. Thank you all so much for your attendance. Everybody enjoy a break. Everybody enjoy the summer. Break. Do some self-care. Take care of yourselves. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. Good evening. Everybody. And this meeting is officially adjourned. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Have a great night.